G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, after the promise of 700 likes for a uh, different Hellcat video against the Germans, you guys absolutely blew me away, so I have to thank you for that. I also put a poll to the community and asked if the F5F-5N, dash or F6F5N, there we go, confusing names, was an acceptable substitute, and you guys overwhelmingly said yes so thank you very much to those of you who uh, are happy that i'm gonna do the f5 f6 f5 n words are hard of course i'm in the french one because that's the one that i have spaded and obviously that's the one that i i guess enjoy the most i don't really know why it's it's pretty look how pretty it is but um if you guys want a you know a hellcat like that but in real life I have a a little a little sponsor. No, no, not quite a sponsor. A, a partner, a full blown channel partner, ladies and gentlemen. I am very very happy to announce that Air Models and I have uh, entered some sort of partnership, where I get to basically advertise their models and I get a small commission in return. I did want to make sure that these models were up to top scratch, and I don't want any bullshit. Basically. I had a look at the prices and I thought, holy crap, like 60 bucks for a model of a, I don't know, anything. It's pretty much between sort of 30 and 100 bucks for a pretty sizable little static model of a, of a plane or a helicopter if you want. And they come both commercial, military, you know, jets, props, helicopters, you name it. It's a massive variety of different aircraft. And I wanted to make sure that they weren't going to rip any of us off. Because I I want to buy some of these too, to be honest. I sent them an email and asked them, what are these things made of? And I got back the answer, and it was die-cast metal. Die-cast metal at, like, less than 150 bucks for a model. The last die-cast model I saw in a shop front was almost 250 bucks. So... I don't know about you, ladies and gents, but I am more than happy to offer you guys these models. These things, for me, are absolutely phenomenal. The detailing, some of it, for the cheaper ones, is in plastic. But, to be honest, that's kind of acceptable. And the premium ones, which are, you know, a couple hundred bucks, they're made of a high-quality resin, and they have fully retractable landing gear, stuff like that. I am more than happy to partner with these guys. They seem like a great team. They have great customer service, and I can talk to someone like they're a real human. They do worldwide shipping. So if you want to do that, hop down into the description and grab yourself a, a Hellcat. <laughs> grab yourself an 810 Warthog. Grab yourself an F4 Phantom. I really like the F4 Phantom, actually. I'm not a massive fan of the plane itself, but that model is just so beautiful. And the moment I get a place to display it, I will 100% be buying something from that store. Anyway, ladies and gents, back to the gameplay, and we're going to be looking at the F6F5N. I said it right this time. I'm getting better at this. So, a lot of people do tend to sleep on the Hellcat, and in some cases, that is for a good reason, and in this case, it's because it's over-tiered. This particular Hellcat basically has one or two redeeming factors, that being its turn rate, and of course, its guns. The 20mm cannons combined with the 50 cals is a really, really nice, neat combo. And of course, you get a neat little radar, but honestly, the radar doesn't really do much. And from what I can tell, you don't even get a lead indicator. As you can tell, I was testing the lead indicator thingy out on a teammate, and it didn't really work. But the radar itself is really, really reliable. I can spot things through clouds, like I can see this 264. I can probably see other things that I don't even know are there. And it's just really nice to have a radar. Obviously, it doesn't always work perfectly, and there are ways to get around it, like flying low, or I suppose flying directly above the plane. But, you know, radar. I love the rate that this thing sort of sweeps as well. It's kind of funny. I, I don't really get why, though. Is it because it rotates? The only reason it would spin that fast is if it could rotate in my eyes. The other ones seem to like sweep on a on a gimbal. But I've I've you know I've seen the pictures of them, but as you can tell, this particular Hellcat is not really looking too fine. Where 
below BF 109s, and you will find that this happens a shit ton. It will happen practically every game. And if you don't get a team that works with you, you're pretty much done for. So right off the bat, I would definitely recommend that Gaijin lowers this Hellcat to 4.0. I think that would do a lot for it. It doesn't have to face G2 Tropicals all the time. And of course, the BF109 F4s, which are at the same battle rating, are, in my opinion, more or less equal. So, speaking of BF109s, I'm going to be diving on these ones because the Spitfire has decided to bait them low. BF109G, and BF109Gs are really, really, really deadly to this thing because they just have that energy retention, especially the G6, which combines that energy retention with climb rate. Especially being a very heavy BF109, it is, it is like sonic fast sometimes. Not really, it's like subsonic fast, but you get what I'm saying. Sometimes as well, you'll find that you get a bunch of lemmings on your on your six, and I've managed to get this exactly that way. I'm going to try and keep my speed, and of course Cloud Thunder isn't really fun, so maybe I need to find a way to back out of these clouds. BF109G comes in again, and I'm going to sweep underneath him to try and get him to bait him into a turn fight so that he falls for exactly what I want him to. And it looks like he is. He's continuing, continuing straight. Hello? Uh, <laughs> did he just sort of, I don't know, just like disconnect or something? It feels, you know, it's kind of strange. You, you would expect that maybe if the Hellcat had a little bit less energy, he would be able to break free from me. But not with 20 mils. I would never, ever risk that at 400 meters. And certainly not with 50 cals at any time of the year. So... I'm going to be continuing my battle, but still sticking into these clouds. They're really, really awful, honestly. I've never, never liked clouds in War Thunder, but, you know, we're going to make the most of that. And I can see this little BF109 here below me, but I don't really want to turn around and just blow everything, because otherwise I might miss something in the clouds. But then I realize that he's going to, he's going to start coming back to me, and there's someone above me that might want my booty. So... I need to quickly take care of these things. BF109G2 set him on fire as he comes out of the clouds. And I'm starting to look around for that F4 again, but uh, the minimap isn't <laughs> the minimap isn't helping because there's too many red dots. Now, one of the things that you'll notice with the uh, Hellcat 5N is that it faces 190s. And not only 190s, it faces the D13. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> what are you... What are you doing fighting D13s? Regardless, uh, this thing as well is pretty tough. It turns really well, but not quite as well as the Hellcat. So if you can bait it with some other teammates, you can bait him into turning around, and then you can get onto his six and uh, do things like miss most of your shells. And, you know, that's a, that's a really fine way to spend your ammunition. Almost as fine as almost ramming into a teammate and getting clapped by a BF-109F. This uh, 190C doesn't really have many other options, I see that he's set on fire, and I'm just going to leave him. I took a couple of shots, but that was sort of uh, slow reaction times because I'm me. BF109F is coming straight back, and he puts a leak in my boots. So I'm going to start to struggle here. I go up into the vertical because I know if I go into the vertical and he follows that I will have teammates to back me up, and he's decided to try and make a last-ditch effort to go for the P61C, which doesn't really help him much, because that puts him in a bit of a prime position, as long as I can get my guns on target, to take this guy out. And it's really, really bad aim by me. But, holy crap, that was bad. Well, at least he's being distracted by P... Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, I would have had a nice 4K. And you stole my beans. But, you know, that's okay. Because, at the end of the day, we're going to win this battle. So, realistically... That's all that matters, and that's all that should matter. I'm just making jokes, okay? Calm the fuck down. <laughs> so, what do you do with a leaky Hellcat? Well, head straight back to base. Because the Hellcat doesn't climb really well, you're not really going to be getting the most out of a dying engine. So, as soon as that engine starts turning yellow, you know that you need to be within 5 or 10 kilometers of that base. Otherwise, you're going to fall out of the sky. And it's just about as simple as that. The Hellcat is one of those planes that is, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. But at the same time, there are some things that you always wish that uh, it had, like climb rate. Obviously, the Hellcat was designed to fight zeros, which, you know... I mean, I suppose the zeros had climb rate, but 
the Hellcats had speed, so against the Germans, it does feel really, really weird. It feels different. Personally, it feels a lot nicer against the, the Japanese, because you're able to exploit that speed, and you're all also able to exploit the maneuverability against things like Kai 61s, uh, sometimes A7Ms, and occasionally N1Ks and you know, Kai 84s. Because yes, you will be seeing N1. Will you be seeing N1Ks? I think the M1K1, which is at 5.0, if I'm not mistaken, and I believe the Kai 84 Co is 5.3 as well. I really don't know why it faces them, because the Kai 84 Co completely outclasses every Hellcat that I've ever seen. It practically, it, it basically outcompetes all the P-51s as well. So I don't really know why, but you know what, I think this is an extra reason for this thing to go down to 4.0. I, I do like it, it's kind of fun, but only because it's an underdog, not necessarily because it's really good, or because it has something unique to it, but because it is that, you know, turn fighter, if you will. It It is that sort of American prop with that can't retain energy nearly as well as the other ones and of course nearly as well as the uh, as the German props so we're going to hop into another battle just because Normandy again of course le, le français on le Normandy I <laughs> I hope I pronounced that half okay and didn't butcher that too much I'm sorry French I know the, it's funny my French viewers are really chill and they, they absolutely go nuts when I'm when I when I can pronounce like itonda really well. But the moment I butcher something in Swedish, my god, you, the meatball army is all over me and I can't do anything about it. But uh <laughs> memes aside, I'm gonna be engaging here against another BF 109 G6 and he just clips me a little bit, doesn't do any damage probably because he hits me with the 13s, but he's gonna go into a little bit of a I suppose a climb. He's gonna fall for that that climby thing where he tries to climb away from me and then gets absolutely memed. In this case I've only managed to rip his flapperino but it's okay. Okay to the point where I can potentially get another round onto him. Unfortunately for me he's playing smart and I don't like it when enemies play smart because I, I want kills you know. I'm like the average regular Joe I just want some kills but um, you, you all gotta go playing smart like that and denying me easy kills. Very, very disappointed. <laughs> oh man, I can't really take this seriously. But I guess this particular plane isn't really meant to be taken seriously. It's not one of those planes that you go out there and get ace games every game with. That would be the BF 109F4 of the G2 Tropical. Or the Focke Wolf 190A4. Three absolutely fantastic planes that this thing has to face. <laughs> oh well. At least I get a little bit of ammunition to spray and... Um, Combined with my crappy internet, crappy aim, and this guy is probably using a VPN and using some absolute gamer moves, I'm really having a hard time putting this guy down. Eventually, I'll get the hang of it. I do what is called a lag roll. I, at least that's what I call it. And I'm able to sort of re-dive on him. Putting that critical hit in, and then finally taking him out. Another BF109 coming head-on with me. Hopefully I can get him in a, in a head-on, but unfortunately no dice. I'm going to cut above him, which is kind of stupid, and then across again, which is very, very risky. What I should have done is turned out a bit further, which meant that he would have had to turn way out to get me, where in this case, I'm just sort of confusing him and hoping that he misses. That was a really poor play, but I managed to get away with it, which is really surprising. He's gone in to turn against me again, and I can hopefully maybe get some hits onto this guy once more. Again, these BF-109 pilots are putting me in the driver's seat by turn fighting. And you can see I've managed to take out two this way. And I'm going to get a couple more. It doesn't really look like it because I'm I'm going to be struggling here. I've got two and then soon to be potentially three enemies in that Focke Wolf 190 off in the distance. Maybe I can get a cheeky head on and both of us miss. Thank goodness. That was a really risky head on. And honestly, I really, really stress that People should not be pushing head-ons like that, myself included. I am definitely very guilty of being an absolute muppet of a pilot. So, into a reversal here with this 190A, and I managed to get a beautiful shot. That was mm, so crisp. The trick to that is when you're starting to get a little bit slow, put some rudder into the direction that you think that the enemy is going to go, and then try and execute off that. Maybe we can go for a second reversal, but unfortunately the rudder does not behave. This thing is not really a plane that rolls well. 
And I suppose because it was meant to counter the zero and the zero isn't exactly known for its role. So all it really needs is something to keep up with the zero, I guess. Now, this particular BF109 is also falling for the uh, turn fight with the Hellcat trick that I love to absolutely, uh, I, I love it. It's just great when they turn fight with me. And there is another nice four kill game. You might think, well, you know, there's still like five or six enemies. But the bombers actually do something for once, which is really, really surprising. I, I never expect the bombers to win the game. And uh, there it goes. A game won by bombers. So thank you, bombers, I suppose. Well done. Anyway, that is the F6F5N. One of the most over-tiered planes in the entire game. But you know what? It has a special place in my heart. Because it's just... It's, it's French. It's weird. It's American, but it's French, and it's weird. But anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to check out air models in the description below. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.